So today we are going to create this 3D building animation in After Effects. Now it's a very popular technique. You might have seen it on social media and trust me, it's very easy to create. So let's see how to make this. All right, so right now I'm in After Effects and for this example, I'm going to use this image. So it just simply has this image of a building. Now it's completely up to you can use whatever you want. I just downloaded this from Pexels. Now this technique should work with whatever image you want to use. So for example, you can use this image, this image or this one. Just make sure that it has a clear view of the building and you can easily mask out the building and fill that area with the surrounding. So just make sure to take care of these things and you can use pretty much whatever building image you want to use. So once you have selected your image, you can just import it in After Effects and now you are ready to go. So first we will begin by creating a new composition. So for that, let's go to composition. You go and let's call this one main width and height will can make it 19 20 by 10 80 frame width 30 fps duration you can make 10 whatever you want just click on okay here we have this composition now i'm going to like create a composition for the image so let's select the image and drag it onto this composition icon now we are basically going to like cut out this building from this background and also we have to fill this background with this surrounding so there are a couple of ways in which you can do that you can either use photoshop so in photoshop you can like select this building and like remove it and use the generative fill to like fill out the blank area but if you don't want to use that then you can do this step in after effects only let me show you how to do that so first i'm going to like select this image and let's just select this pen tool and first we are going to like very precisely mask out this building so for that we can like start creating some points make sure that this layer is selected otherwise it will create a shape layer so just like very nicely mask out this building and you can do it precisely however you want so now I have masked out the building, but we actually want it in the reverse order. So we basically want the building to be removed and the background to stay. So for that, we can press M to select the mask. And instead of add, we can set this to subtract. Now you can see we have this cutout. Now we can fill this cutout easily in After Effects. Let me show you how. But first I'm going to like duplicate this so that we have a back backup. And I'm going to like press M. Let's set this to add and I'm going to call this one building and we can hide this layer. Now let's select this and let's call this BG for background. Now we are going to make use of content aware fill. So in order to do that, let's just select this endpoint and just like make it like very close, just probably like a frame or two frame long. And once you're done with this, we can like select this layer. Let's go to windows. And from here we have this option called content aware fill. Just click on it. Now it will give you an area or this panel. So under this, make sure that only the background layer is visible so that we are able to see the cutout. Now this, I'm going to set this to object and the lighting correction, it will be unchecked. Just make sure to check it out. I'm going to like set this to strong and make sure to set this to work area. Now after that, just click on generate fill layer and it will ask you to save your project wherever you want. So let me just quickly do that. Now I'm going to save this project. And once you're done with this, it will take some time. And after that, it will create this layer. Now here you can see it has like filled out this area. Now it's completely up to you if you are not satisfied with this result then you can like play around with these let's just set this to subtle because i can see some little bit of area over here now let's just make sure to hide it out let's select this background and just click on generate fill layer so there you go here we have created this background and i think this one is looking much better than the older one so we can delete the older one now we want this to like be visible throughout this composition area so for that we can select this right click time let's freeze frame now we can like select it and extend it to the very end perfect now we can place it down below and we can enable our building so we can basically we have soloed this building out of this area and we can easily animate it now since this scene is not very complicated it's very simple it's just a building and a background so hence we are able to like easily mask out this building and get this area filled but in case you have a very complicated scene then you can use generative fill in photoshop to like do it precisely so once we are happy with this we are ready to like animate this out so for that we are going to select this building and i'm going to like basically divide this building into like couple of parts so before we animate this out i'm going to select this building and let's pre-compose this let's call this part one because we are going to like split it into like different parts so make sure that move all attribute is set just click on okay now i'm going to select this and let's just draw some masks to create different parts of this building so i'm going to divide this into four parts but it's completely up to you. you can like divide it five six whatever you want so we are basically do it like not very precisely just roughly so let's select this pen tool make sure that this is layer is selected now just start creating some mask let's create over here now at this point we can like pick some 
area so let's just click over here and now we can like do a little bit of precision work and i'm going to like start creating a line so let's just create this line somewhere around here now do it precisely because we have to like make this area seamless let's click over here now at last we can like close this up so here you can see we have cut out this first part now in the same way we are going to like cut out the all the other parts but let me show you how to do that very easily so first i'm going to select this press ctrl d now we have this part two let's just quickly rename this to part two now i'm going to select this and we are going to like keep these points like as it is and we are going to just move these two other points these three points which are at the top so just select them and let's move them down now we are going to do the same thing we are going to like pick a couple of points so let's pick like this point over here and let's align this to this one we're basically cutting out this building into like four equal parts there you go now we have two and in the same way we can duplicate it once again and let's select these three points and let's just move them down we are not moving the top part because they are like perfectly aligning with the top portion now let's create the third mask now here you can see we have divided this building into four parts so we have this base this one this one and this one now all we have to do is just simply animate this so before we continue if you enjoy my work and you want to support me then you can check out my patreon page over there you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so make sure to check it out link for that is in the description now let's continue so let's focus on the animation part it's actually quite easy let's press p for position let's add keyframe this is going to be a final position so let's just move this to somewhere around two seconds and in the beginning we can like move all of these layers down below so let's move this one around here this one we can like do it like this let's just move all of these layers to this point and after that we want them to like go to the top so we can select this top part which is this one and let's just move it to somewhere around here now let's move the second part and i'm going to move it to this point let's select the third one and let's just move it a little bit up we're basically moving them like a little bit far away from their actual position and after that they will go back to their initial ones let's select this and we can like move it a little bit up as well we don't have to do it like extremely top here you can see we have all of these cutouts and after that they will go back to their orig original position now in order to make this animation more impressive we can select all the keyframes press f9 let's go to the graph editor now if a graph looks different then make sure you're using the speed graph not the value graph now let's select all the keyframes and i'm going to like quickly change this to look something like this so in the beginning we can like have a very quick motion and at this point they can like probably stop or something and at this one we can have them come back very quickly now let's play around with their timing so we can move these keyframes a little bit closer and these like a little bit more closer around here now here you can see we have this very nice building effect on this bottom one i'm not liking this animation so we can probably like delete this keyframe and let's just play around with these two only so let's press f9 to ease them and i'm going to just simply animate them like this let's just move this to this one perfect so yeah, i think this looks good now in order to make this like a little bit more impressive what we can do is we can have some delay so we can have this first part like coming in very quickly then we can have like other parts revealing after that so let's just bring them like that and we can have their ending like somewhat similar so let's just move all of these to at one place like that there you go now i like this one now in order to make this like more realistic or 3d we can fill this gap by simply having some fake 3d depth so it's actually very easy to do and for that we can like simply use a shape tool so let's select the shape tool make sure none of the layer is selected and we are going to like create some rough shapes so i'm going to like pick some points so let's just pick the top portion so somewhere around here now we make sure none of the layer is selected again and just click 
and let's create a rough shape. Now the fourth point you can like just simply randomly place it and after that we can play around with its position just to see what looks good. So somewhere around here I think this looks good. Now we can like place it down below all of these parts like that. Now we can select this and let's just parent it to its, its respective part. So I can parent it to this part one and let's select this press ctrl D to duplicate this. Now we can do the same thing over here as well. So we have this duplicate, just move it to this next part. And after that, select the pen tool and just align this shape. Let's align these endpoints. Let's align this fourth part to like make it look 3D. Perfect. Now make sure to parent this to the second layer because since it is parented to the first one, let's duplicate this and we can parent it to the third one and we can do the same thing. And for this one, we can probably like move a little bit ahead. Let's pick this point and let's move this shape down below. Now I have created all of these three parts and if I press play, you can see that they give us this illusion of 3D depth. Perfect. Now, still this is not looking very good because we have to add some motion blur and some 3D shake to this. So let me just quickly do that. But first I'm going to like create one more composition. So we already have this main, so we can make use of it. So we have this composition image too. We can drag it over here and you can see that it's very big. So we can like make it a little bit smaller like that. Now here you can see we have this animation. Now let's add some shake to this so that we can go inside to this composition back again. Let's create a new adjustment layer. And on top of this, I'm going to apply transform effect. Let's drag it onto this and let's apply one more effect. Let's search for slider control. Let's drag it over here. Let's duplicate this and we are going to like basically create a wiggle expression for the positions. Hold on the alt key and click on this position stopwatch. Now I'm going to type my expression. So it's basically wiggle curly this these rounded braces. And in the first wiggle, we are going to pick whip and select the slider number one. And after that, add a comma. After that, pick whip the second slider. Perfect. Now we can animate the shape by simply animating these sliders. So for that, let's pick a point. So somewhere around here, you can see we have this impact. Let's add keyframes for both of these. Let's select this, press U and we can move these keyframes like one frame ahead. And at this point, we can set the values to something like five. And the next value, we can set this to, let's say 50. Like that, let's move like a little bit ahead. And I'm going to set both of these values to zero. As we have this impact, we have this very nice shake, but it's completely up to you. If you want to have more shake, then you can like increase this. So if I set this to, let's say 20, this will give us a lot of shake because we have increased the frequency. And if you want to have like very vigorous shake or like moving this building like a lot, then you can increase this value. So if I set this to 200, now you will see that the building moves a lot. But for this one, I'm going to like keep it very subtle, like five and 50 looks good to me. Perfect. Now there is one more thing that you can do. Now in the beginning, I don't want this like area to be static. So for that, we can set this to something like 0.5 or let's just set this to one comma. Let's set this to 50. And now if I press play, you can see that in the beginning, we have this very subtle camera movement. And I think this looks good. We can probably set this to 100. So here you can see we have this very nice motion in the beginning as well. But there is one small problem. You will notice that we have some black areas over here, which we can easily fix by simply applying a motion tile effect. So let's search for motion tile. Let's drag it over here. Make sure that this effect is top on top of all of these. Set the output width to 150 and the output height to 150 as well. Make sure to select this mirror image, mirror edges. Now here you can see we have this and all of these areas, these edges will be filled out perfectly. Now let's add some motion blur. It's actually very easy. All you have to do is just select all of these layers and let's just enable this blur over here. Make sure that this is also checked. Otherwise you won't have any blur. 
And if I press play, you can see we have added this very nice motion blur like that. Now we can go back to the main composition and we can have some scaling and position animation as well. So let's add keyframe for position and scale. Let's press U to reveal both of these. Let's move them like a little bit ahead. And in the beginning, we can have a little bit of zoom and after that we can like move this down below and we can select these keyframes press f9 and let's just change the graph to look like that there you go now we have created our final animation the best thing about this method is that you can do this with any kind of image you have just make sure that the background or the image is not very complicated if you are able to remove this building very easily and you are able to like fill the background then you can like do this effect very easily so hope you learned something from this one and the project files for this tutorial is available on patreon so if you are supporting me over there then you can download it from there and if you are not then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one mm -hmm.